Today's video is going to be my unfiltered and honest opinions on fragrances that I received free in PR. So if you wanna hear more, then please keep on watching. Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel if it's the first time you're visiting. Thank you so much for joining me today. As already mentioned in the intro, today's video is going to be all about my honest and unfiltered opinions on fragrances that I received free in PR. Now I was very much inspired to do this video after watching a few of Anna's videos here on YouTube. If you don't know who Anna is, I'm going to link her channel in the description box below. She's absolutely incredible and I love her sense of humor. And she makes these videos where she gives her honest opinions on fragrances that she received in PR. So I thought that was a really cool idea. I don't often talk about fragrances that I dislike on my channel, not as much as I probably should. I try to keep my channel as positive as possible. However, I feel like some of you want to see more honest opinions on the fragrances that did not work out for me also. Now, I am very, very grateful to receive fragrances in PR. It's such a fantastic part of reviewing fragrances on YouTube, but I don't review around 50% of the fragrances that I get just because I like to talk about fragrances that I love. And if something didn't work out for me, more often than not, I won't talk about it. However, I know that's probably not helpful for you because even if something didn't work out for me, doesn't necessarily mean it won't work out for you and I can review something objectively. So I've had a few fragrances recently in PR, so I thought it was a good opportunity to give my unfiltered, honest opinions on this little haul that I have here. And there are definitely some fragrances that didn't work out for me, so get ready. It's gonna be a fun one, I hope. And don't take it too seriously, just because something maybe didn't work out for me, doesn't mean I'm saying it's a bad fragrance. It just did not work out for me, but I can tell you a little bit about the fragrance and who might enjoy it. So now that's out of the way, let's get started on the first fragrance. The first fragrance is a new release from Kenzo, and this is Flower Ikebana, and it is inspired by cherry blossoms. So I was super excited when I received an email from the retailer Essential to say that they had popped this in the post for me to review. And Japan is one of my favorite places in the world. And this is inspired around the cherry blossoms in Japan. So yeah, I had very high hopes for this one. Now, I like this fragrance. At this stage, it's not a full blown love, but I definitely really like it. It is a cherry blossom fragrance, as I already mentioned, but it also has a very prominent note of tuberose. Now, I normally don't like tuberose. It can be very hit or miss for me in a fragrance. And I will say it is actually quite prominent in Flower Ikebana, but I do like this because there's other things going on in this composition to kind of balance out those notes. It's not just a floral in my opinion. Up top, you have a note of buckwheat tea, which gives this a little bit of a unique edge and kind of leans into it being inspired by Japan also. And then you've got lots of sandalwood in the base. There's also some cedar, I believe, and some vetiver but it's a very likable floral fragrance. I would say it's pretty mass appealing too. I can't see many people disliking this unless maybe you don't like floral fragrances. It's definitely floral. You get that front stage and center right from the opening. And I do get lots of tuberose. But then I am getting the sandalwood. I'm getting a very light tea note and a little bit of earthy vetiver. But in essence, it's definitely a floral. I would say I can smell the tuberose more than the cherry blossom, for me anyway. And yeah, I just think this is a nice new release. It's not a full-blown love at this stage. However, it is very new. You can see by the level here. So I will play around with it, but it's a definite like at this point. 
The next fragrance I knew I wanted to try as soon as I received a message saying, would I like to try anything from this brand? And the fragrance in question is called Far. Now the perfumer behind this brand is also the perfumer or the nose behind Lush. And I love Lush fragrances. I love Lush bath bombs. And Simon, I believe, was the global perfumer for the last 10 years. I'm not sure if he still is. I think maybe he still is. But he also has his own brand. So of course, I definitely wanted to try something from this new brand. And James, my husband, actually opened this one whilst I was away. And he sent me a message and he was like, oh, one of these really smells like a Lush store which I thought was really strange that he picked up on that because in the package, there was nothing to suggest that um, the brand was anything to do with Lush, anything like that. He didn't know the backstory. So I got home and I sampled it and I wouldn't have picked up on that initially. I mean, great nose James that he did pick up because of course, like they are linked, but I don't necessarily think this smells like a Lush store. However, that's his opinion and I respect that. To me, it does kind of have a slight bath bomb vibe to it because there's a fizziness in here. To me, this smells like a gourmand lemon sherbet cheesecake. That's the only way I can describe it. It's a sour and fizzy lemon but it's also creamy and lactonic. And then I can smell like a buttery shortbread or something like that. It is a straight up gourmand to my nose. Yeah, a little bit bath bombish. I think that was really impressive that he picked up on that kind of DNA. Now, if you are a fan of anything from Lush, Lush fragrances, Lush bath bombs, then I would highly recommend that you sample this brand because I think it's really cool. One thing to mention is the lid actually, and I can show you what's happened here. I don't know if you can see, maybe not, but there's a little bit of perfume residue on the cap. And it's probably my fault because this lid to me is really hard to put on. And then I instantly wanna press it down to fit flush to the bottle but then I'm pressing the atomizer. So that's one little critique from me. Plus I wish instead of having this sticky label, the far was printed on the bottle. But in terms of the juice, I personally really like the juice inside this bottle. I can't wait to play around with it a little bit more. But at this stage, and I'm just gonna say at this stage, I'm not gonna hold myself to this. This might be my favorite lemon gourmand in my collection right now. So I'm gonna link the website down below where you can check out this new brand and find out more about it. But I'm impressed so far. I think it's really cool. And if you like your gourmands specifically with a lemon note, then Far is, to me, a fantastic fragrance. So I received a message from this next brand asking if I would like to review their fragrances. And my initial reaction was, I'm not sure that I want to. And I had seen some reviews on this already. I didn't feel like it aligned with my personal taste. But the thing that kind of swayed me is they were really nice in the correspondence. They really wanted my honest opinion on this. And I thought, why not? Let's give it a go. You don't know. So, the next fragrances in question are by S Boy, i.e. Soldier Boy, and it is S Boy for Her by Draco and S Boy for Him by Draco. And I don't know if you know who Soldier Boy is, but I've got the song in my head. I'm not gonna sing it because I don't wanna get copyright ban or copyright strike. But yeah, these fragrances are by Draco, i.e. Soldier Boy. Sorry, I keep tapping the bottles. And I'd seen a lot of reviews on this one in general. So I'm gonna actually start with the For Him version. And out of the two, I would say this one is probably my favorite. Now on your opinion on this, would you class this as a celebrity fragrance? Because obviously Soldier Boy, he's a celebrity, right? I would class that as a celebrity fragrance. 
Now, the main reason why I wasn't sure I wanted to review this is because I see it as a celebrity fragrance and I think the price point is high for that category. I don't know if my feelings are valid here or if anyone would agree with me. I believe this is a $240 or $260 fragrance. So this is, you know, like high price niche category. But I'd seen a lot of great reviews. This is in some videos, like top 10 men's fragrances ever. It's also in a panty dropper fragrance video or multiple panty dropper fragrance videos. Now, my opinion on that is no fragrance is going to be a panty dropper. Not for me anyway. I, I think that is a very clickbait title. That's my personal view on it. That's what I believe. A personality is gonna draw you to someone. Yes, their scent is going to help, but it's not going to get you the woman or the man. Let's move that aside. I actually think this is a really great fragrance. It's extremely likable. It's quite sweet. It has vanilla, there's amber, there's caramel. It's got tonka bean. There's some iris in here too. And I would say this is a very kind of mass appealing men's fragrance. I don't see how someone could potentially dislike this to be quite honest with you, which is why it's quite a safe bet. I think this is actually quite a classy men's fragrance and taking my opinions like out of the equation, if you was to put this juice in a different brand's bottle, would I feel the same? Probably not. So. I'm trying to like kind of put the juice in a different brand's bottle or take the brand out of my head and the price point and review this more objectively. And I do think it's a great fragrance. To me, it smells quite similar to Jean-Paul Gaultier's Le Mal, which is a very nice men's fragrance. Is it worth the price point? I don't know, I'll let you decide on that. For me, at this point, I'm not sure. But at the same time, I think it's a really nice fragrance and I've definitely got fragrances in my collection that are probably not worth the price point. But if you connect and you love a fragrance, then why not? So yeah, it's a great fragrance. I've tried it twice thus far. My husband enjoys it too. So I'm gonna play around with it a little bit longer. So I do think it's a really great men's fragrance, but I also do want to get your feedback on some of the points I touched on, i.e. do you believe this is a celebrity fragrance? What do you think about the price point? All of that kind of stuff. So let's move on to the feminine fragrance. I'm just going to pop this one down. So here we have For Her. And again, I think this is a nice fragrance. However, do I think it's worth the price point? That is really questionable to me. This has the kind of DNA that something like Montel has, where I think it's actually a very likable, mass appealing fragrance. Again, it has a syntheticness to it, but I could see this getting lots of compliments. So I do like this fragrance. When I sprayed it on, I was like, this is really nice. It has a prominent note of strawberry. You've got some musk in here too. There's lots of vanilla and then you've got a creamy gardenia note. So yeah, all in all, it's a good fragrance too. I don't love it, but I like it. And I do love a strawberry note. Yeah, it gives me kind of like that Montel DNA in a way. But I'm just stuck on the price point at the moment. So I don't know if I recommend it or I don't recommend it. I would say I'm leaning maybe I don't recommend it for my personal taste. Yeah, I'm just not sure. The price point just, mm, I just don't know. Let me know your thoughts. Do you wanna see more in-depth reviews on either the men's version or the women's version? But yeah, thank you to the brand for sending this over because it was a really great experience sampling them thus far. And I definitely really like the men's one way more than the women's one. The next fragrance is a newer brand to me that I've discovered recently thanks to Greta. And the brand in question is called Benina. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. And when the brand offered to send me something, I was like, 
yeah, of course I want to try it because it has this really luxury vibe to it. So it comes in this really beautiful presentation and then you open up the box and inside you have this bejeweled crown and yeah, it just gives me very kind of Roger vibes, very luxurious and high end. This box is lovely too, but we're not going to review the box right now. We're going to review the fragrance. So let me pop this one down. So this is the bottle and I decided to go with Worthiness. I read a few reviews online and I watched a few YouTube reviews to kind of get a feel for what I might like the most. And Worthiness kind of stood out to me as having quite a big, complex composition, something that might be a little bit more unique in my collection. And with a brand like Benina, I thought I wanna go with the one that maybe gave the most opulent feel. And from the notes and from the reviews, Worthiness was the one that kind of stood out to me as having that opulent presence about it. It's a sweet oud fragrance. There's a little bit of rose in here. There's some cinnamon too. It's got tonka bean, it's got vanilla. There's pimento, orris, patchouli. There's a lot going on within this composition. Now this fragrance smells expensive. This is wealthy, this is luxury. And I do feel like fragrances can give off that kind of luxury expensive feel to it. And it's not just because of the packaging, it's the juice inside. What I will say is the first time I sprayed this, it's got quite an animalic uh, skanky oud in it, but that kind of skankiness only lasted for about 10 minutes. And once that kind of dissipated a little bit, I could smell all of the other gorgeous notes in this fragrance. Again, I haven't done a full day wear test on this, so I'm not gonna give it a full blown review right now. But on first impressions, it is a luxurious, wealthy feeling fragrance. You're going to feel like money when you wear this one, but you do need to like your more animalic ouds. But once that oud kind of settles down a little bit, you're left with more of that sweetness. You're getting the cinnamon, you're getting the rose, you're getting the tonka bean. There's some spicy pimento in here. I'm definitely going to do a more in-depth review on this one but this was a fragrance that I definitely really like. Interested to see if it will become a love when I do a full wear test. And this is on the higher side of the price scale. I guess you can probably tell by the packaging, etc. So I will give you a more in-depth review soon. Please do let me know if you do want to see a review on this one and if you've tried anything from Benina before. But yeah, this one has definitely been a hit within this PR haul. So the last brand that I'm going to talk about was another brand that reached out to me via email. And again, I wasn't sure if I wanted to receive their fragrances in PR. I just didn't feel like the brand maybe aligned to my tastes and I'd seen some reviews in the past and I just wasn't sure. However, during the correspondence, they were so open, they were so lovely and they said, look, we still wanna send you the fragrances. You don't have to review them. Just let us know your feedback and hopefully you find something you like. And I just really loved that attitude and I was like, you know what? Let's do it. So the brand in question is Sun and Musk <laughs> and I have four different fragrances here. Two of them I like, two of them I dislike. One of them I don't like at all. One of them I kind of just don't care for. It's not a full blown dislike. And two of them I like. Let's start with the likes, I guess. Let's start positive. So the first one, I've got my fingerprints all over these bottles. The first one that I like is called Night Illusion, <laughs> but there's a big button here. I think this is a really nice fragrance. However, it smells like Britney Spears' Midnight Fantasy. This is so nostalgic to me. I think it smells lovely. I used to wear Midnight Fantasy way over, like way over 10 years ago. And it's like, a slightly more grown up version of Midnight Fantasy, but very, very similar. Very syrupy, very sweet. 
And I am not the only one who thinks this. So my friend came and she was smelling my fragrances. I didn't prompt her at all. And she was like, this smells like Britney Spears, Midnight Fantasy. And I was like, yeah, I know. <laughs> and she picked that up. And my other fragrance friend, Ali, also messaged me after trying the house. And she was like, Night Illusion really smells like Midnight Fantasy. So it definitely has a very strong resemblance. Now, this one is more expensive than Midnight Fantasy. Can't speak for the longevity of this one yet because I haven't worn it properly on the skin. I'm assuming this one will last longer, but it might not. That's just an assumption. But yeah, if you like Midnight Fantasy, then give Night Illusion a try. And then the next one that I liked was Soft Paradise here. And this one is quite soft actually the name is very fitting and this is a sweet smells like cherry smells like almonds yeah this one's delicious this is probably my favorite from the two that i really like or the two that i like it gives me and only a slight resemblance to galan's oud nude yeah i think this one is really lovely very feminine very, very likeable. I mostly get vanilla, a very light cherry. It's very creamy, it's almondy. Very, very pretty, lightly floral. So Soft Paradise is the one that I like the most and that I would recommend. Again, can't speak for longevity. I've not worn this one for a full day. But please do let me know if any of these Sun and Musk fragrances stand out to you. If they do, of course, I will review them in more detail. The fragrance that was okay to me, but I wasn't a huge fan of, was Golden Dust. Yeah, it's nice, but I've smelt this DNA a lot before. And obviously you're never gonna get something completely unique. There's always gonna be fragrances that have similarities, but this is very much a kind of fruity vanilla amber. Actually, I would say I like this fragrance. It's not a dislike. I guess it just has a slight syntheticness to it. It is a little bit similar to Gentle Fluidity Gold, just a little bit. This one's more complex, it's more fruity, but it has that same kind of DNA going for it. I think it's nice. I would need to play around with it a little bit more, but from sampling the four, I was just like, this one's not really, for me, I don't need it. Um, it's nice, but yeah. It is what it is. And then the fragrance I just wasn't keen on is this one, Amber Rose. And I think it's their newest fragrance actually. This is the one, <laughs> this is the one I've seen people saying they really like. So, woo! This has a very big screechiness to it. It's that same thing that I get from Zerzhov's Herba Pura an extremely screechy, fruity muskiness to it, which means I just can't smell any of the other notes within this fragrance just because that top is so overbearing to my nose that I can't smell anything else. Now, I know that's not everyone's experience because I've spoken to other people who like this fragrance. So once again, my opinion is not a fact. Please do always sample these fragrances yourself, but this is just a fragrance that is a strong dislike, oh, why am I smelling it? This is a strong dislike for me. If any friends or family come round and like this one, they are more than welcome to take this one off my hands. But yeah, unfortunately, I really do dislike Amber Rose. So that was all of the fragrances that I wanted to discuss in today's video. Do you like this format? Do you like these types of videos from me? Please do let me know, but I just want you to know that I don't review every fragrance that I get in PR, especially if I don't like a fragrance, just because it's not the kind of energy I personally bring to my channel. However, I do want to start doing it more often because I think it's useful for you to know the fragrances that I dislike too, because it will help you get a feel for my fragrance taste. And like I said, just because I dislike something doesn't mean I can't objectively review it and tell you the notes in it 
because you might enjoy that fragrance. So I do hope you enjoyed this video. I will always give you my honest feedback. I just personally choose to review fragrances that I love. And just because I receive something free in PR, I'm under no obligation to actually review it or post about it or even say I like it. So I hope you never feel like that. I am just very passionate about fragrances and I love so many different types of DNA. Anyway, I hope you did enjoy this video. Please do let me know the fragrances that have worked out for you recently and the ones that haven't worked out for you. I find it really, really interesting, but I hope to see you all in a future video to come. Thank you so much for joining me today. Have a wonderful day and goodbye.